Welcome back to my TPS Goalkeeper Guide series. Just a reminder that all of the content from this series comes from the full Goalkeeper's Guide that I wrote, available in my Discord server for free, so check the description if you're interested. Today on Common Requests we'll be covering some useful tips for clearing, along with a tutorial for every known clearance along with its uses, difficulty and more. In the first section I will be giving you a few simple yet effective tips for clearing well. When it comes to clearing, many players will overlook one of the most important parts of it, the setup. Unless you can set the ball up properly, that fancy clearance you want to try out won't have any use at all. Tip number one, reset the catch properly. Once you've saved a shot, the game often bugs and your character will move around slowly. The bug also allows other players to kick you around with the ball, meaning they can push you into the net even while you're holding the ball. This is where resetting the catch comes in. What I see almost all keepers do is throw and catch the ball. The problem with this method is that oftentimes the game will bug out and you'll accidentally throw the ball potentially to an opponent or embarrassingly even your own net. Instead, you should drop and catch. This way the ball won't fly off if the react fails. It's actually baffling how many high level keepers don't know this. Tip number two, stay calm. Newer keepers will often try to clear the second they save a shot, and this isn't a good idea unless you've got a golden opportunity and the skills or game sense to pull it off. You should never underestimate the reach other players might have, especially if they're on mobile or from a different region. When you save a shot, you should remain calm and think about your best option. Don't just clear into oblivion, as it's your job to set your team up with a good counterattack. The worst possible thing you could do is panic clear, which ruins any chance you have of timing the kick or surprising the opponents with a good ball. Normally it's just going to cause you to clear low right into an opposing player. Tip number three, drop the ball before you clear. While it's true that the game will automatically drop the ball for you if you left click while holding it, you often won't get the best timing on your clearance. This method also doesn't allow you to use clearances other than the basic clear, which will restrict you quite a lot. For this reason, you'll want to drop the ball beforehand so you can time your kick properly. If you feel this is slow, then honestly just don't worry, you'll be able to do it much faster in the future. Tip number four, set up a counter-attack. As stated earlier, you don't want to clear into oblivion. For most situations, you'll want to take your time and assess your options. If you have an unmarked teammate, they will likely be your best bet. Try not to clear down the middle unless there's a wide enough opening. And when clearing to the sides, try to use the curve that runs along the edge, rather than against it, as it will be easier for your teammates to control the ball. Make sure you switch foot often so your clearances aren't predictable to opponents. The best way to stay unpredictable is to use many different types of clearances, which we'll get into next. The basic clear might be the easiest to use, but it can still be effective if you switch the curve often and aim well. The short clear is useful for passing the ball to teammates who are relatively close to you. It goes short and it's not super fast. The low tackle clear is similar to the short clear in the sense that it stays low to the ground. It doesn't curve much, making it easy to aim. The slide clear is one of the most common variations of clearing that you'll see in public lobbies. It's relatively easy to do but difficult to aim properly. The trick to aiming it is your timing. The sooner you touch the ball after sliding, the lower and straighter it will go. If you touch the ball later, it will go higher and further to the side. This clearance is really useful for tricking opponents. The high flick clear can be tricky to execute, but it will go very far if done properly. You can use this clearance to pass the teammates who are behind opponents around the center of the pitch. The controlled clear is quite tricky to aim, but allows a skilled keeper to place the ball almost anywhere on the pitch. It requires a lot of practice to be able to aim the clear well, but here's a small tip. The later you touch the ball after pressing long X, the higher and shorter it will go. This clearance is extremely reliant on good timing. It's dangerous to mess up, as if you touch the ball too late, it will go backwards. For this reason, it's always recommended to make sure your back isn't directly facing the net. The curveless clear is good for surprising opponents. They'll always expect the ball to curve, so it'll be a shock if you use it well. The best use for this clearance is to send a through ball down the middle of the pitch when both sides are marked. 
Timing can be tricky at first, but it becomes easier with practice. Alternatively, you can use the XO curve clear, which is used in a very similar way. The difference with this one is that it doesn't curve at all, so even if you mess the timing up slightly, it should be fine. The X3 curve clear is the exact opposite of the XO. It curves a lot and it is useful for tricking opponents with an unexpected curving ball. As the ball curves, it should also speed up quite a lot as you're combining the goalkeeper kick with shoot. The sneak curve clear is a combination of the previous two. At first it goes straight forward but it suddenly moves to the side making it extremely effective when used with the XO curve clear to trick opponents who may think the ball is coming straight to them. The lack of ball spin leaves opponents even more confused. The lit clear does not leave the ground and is very effective if you have good aim. This clearance is best used to pass to unguarded teammates or around opponents if your aim is good enough. This clearance was created by a good friend of mine, the talented literate Catalin. Last of all is a clearance that I'm sure a good chunk of you won't need any introduction to, as it's my signature clearance. The Curry Lake is a unique clearance that completely breaks React. And no, I didn't name it, my friend did, so you can blame her. Back to what I was saying, it's very good at tricking opponents. It can be difficult to execute at first, but it becomes much easier with practice. If you don't get it already, when you use this clearance, the ball becomes untouchable and it's not able to be kicked by anyone for an entire 7 seconds, which is more than enough for it to reach your teammates near the other net. This is normally a ground clearance, but it's possible to make the ball airborne through changes in timing. It's not recommended to try a curry lake if opponents are very close to the box as the ball can get stuck on them. And yes, it is technically possible to stop this clearance, but there's a very specific way that not many people know. And I'm not about to share that to thousands of people who are probably watching. If you've managed to figure it out, you can leave a comment down below. I know this video took a lot of time to come out. I've been quite busy, I'm sorry. Regarding the collab, yes, a few of you guessed it. I'm planning on working with Denier for the next and final part of this guide. The video may take some time to come out though, as I'm starting my second year of university right now. For more information on clearing, be sure to check out the full written guide to goalkeeping through the server in the description, completely free for anyone to view. Thank you for watching.